this is. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Okay, ready? Okay, camera rolling? Yep. Okay. Hello, this is Jose Ramos Orton speaking from New York, and I regret not being able to be in Oslo at this time of this very timely, extremely important uh, gathering as Myanmar uh, moves towards elections and hopefully consolidation of democracy, freedoms, rule of law. I'm very familiar with uh, Myanmar, although I could not claim to be an expert. But for those of you who might not know much about my past activities or background, I first went to Burma, then when hardly anyone uh, paid much attention uh, to Myanmar. In July uh, 94, I went there, crossing the border from uh, Chiang Mai uh, and uh, went to uh, Manaplo. There, with some colleagues, I conducted an international human rights and diplomacy uh, training program for uh, students, activists, many of whom I know today are back in their home country, in Yangon, very much engaged in the peace process in Myanmar. If today we can uh, talk about one of the most neglected people in the world, one of the most forgotten, I would say it would be the Rohingya of Myanmar. We are all human beings in this planet. Myanmar is a mosaic of ethnic groups, is a mosaic of cultures, of values, uh, of different experiences, a crossroad from uh, Asia with uh, many influences. But the Rohingya seem to uh, have uh, the least of rights the least of privileges as citizens of Myanmar, as human beings. There have been extraordinary abuse, humiliation, killings, expulsion of Rohingyas from their ancestral land. Because whether they had been there for thousands of years, or a few hundred years, or if they were there only some generations ago, they still have rights as peoples of Myanmar because they were born there in Myanmar. They have been living there for generations, regardless of how long thousands of centuries they have been there. I do not wish to lecture uh, any group in Myanmar. I do not wish to lecture authorities in uh, Myanmar. I know the process of transition from dictatorship to democracy is a complex, tortuous, unpredictable, long one. And we must all contribute to uh, create a climate of dialogue, mutual acceptance, and they may be moving towards a roadmap leading to a Myanmar that is politically open, pluralistic, and that is embracing of all its ethnic and religious communities. However, I know that is, this is easier said than done, because there are suspicions, there are prejudices, but that's what leaders are all about. Leaders at community level, leaders at national level, who must embrace each other, who must act with compassion, with wisdom, to embrace everyone, including the Rohingyas, so that Myanmar can be a shining example in Southeast Asia and in Asia in general. Again, I wish to pay tribute to all those in Myanmar who for generations have struggled for freedom, for democracy, 
until today when you are on the eve of free general elections and I hope that all will be able to participate. The Rohingyas, the Muslim communities and everyone in an atmosphere of freedom, of uh, no coercion, of no threats and when election results come it will be a new promising beginning for Myanmar, a further step in the consolidation of democracy in your beautiful country. I wish you all success in this conference and as always I pray to God the Almighty and the Merciful to continue to bless the great people of Myanmar with wisdom, happiness and prosperity.